Happy Ahsoka Day, everybody. It's finally here. Ahsoka premieres tonight. So, let's get underway with a fan fiction centered around Ahsoka. What if Ahsoka never left the Jedi Order? That's what I want to get into today. Hope you enjoy. Let's get right into it. Ahsoka was in the Republic prison on her way to visit Republic prisoner Leda Termond, who was arrested for the bombing of the Jedi Temple. She had recently requested to talk to Ahsoka, and so the Jedi Padawan made her way into the cell. Leda began rambling about how she was set up, and before Ahsoka could respond, she was lifted into the air, choking. Ahsoka was confused, but after a moment, she focused her mind. Someone was doing this to Leda, someone that she could not see, and they had to be close by. Ahsoka felt into the Force, and could feel someone hiding in the vents. Using the Force, Ahsoka ripped down the vent and pulled down the person hiding inside. Ahsoka made eye contact with the real culprit, her good friend, Barris Afi. The door to the cell opened to reveal Fox and his men. Barris ignited her lightsaber to block the stun shots from the clones, but while she was distracted, Ahsoka pushed her into the wall. Fox hit her with a stun blast, and Barris was arrested. Anakin Skywalker made his way to the prison as fast as he could to find a distraught Ahsoka sitting outside Barriss's cell. Evidence was building against Barriss being behind the bombing with her hiding in the vent and Leta confirming it all. And after being put in the cell, Barriss revealed how much she hated the Jedi for their involvement in this corrupt war. Anakin and Ahsoka left together and Ahsoka shared her concerns about Barriss not being right about everything but certainly having some points. Anakin said he understands why some Jedi are frustrated, but giving in to the dark side is never the right path. Ahsoka completely agreed, and in no time, they were back on the front lines of the Clone Wars with Anakin, her, and Obi-Wan, the most legendary trio of the Clone Wars. Anakin, Ahsoka, Obi-Wan, and they were sent out to the Outer Rim sieges for months. Ahsoka, like Barriss and many other Jedi, hated the war at this point, but she fought for the people and fought for the clones. It was so close to being over, and after months in the Outer Rim, the Battle of Urbana was won with ease, and an emergency call was sent out to the trio. Chancellor Palpatine was captured by Count Dooku, and the three of them were requested to help. Count Dooku sat with his Sith Master, Darth Sidious, aboard the Invisible Hand. This was the day their plans must come to shape, and Anakin Skywalker's fall to the dark side must begin. The plan was clear. Dooku fights off Skywalker, Kenobi, and Tano. He must kill the Master Kenobi and Apprentice Tano, for only then will Skywalker access his full power. His attachments have grown to be a part of him, and cutting off those attachments will unlock what is hidden inside. Skywalker will not turn to the dark side easily, but by no means is it impossible. Once they are dead, Dooku has to get himself captured by Anakin, is what Sidious told him. Anakin will be a Republic hero, his story only made stronger as he overcame the losses of his friends. He will be a hero, and Sidious will take the time to turn him to their side. His holonet interviews denouncing the corruption in the Senate and the Jedi Order. It will give him cause for Order 66. Dooku looked forward to the day that he and Sidious ruled their new empire, with Anakin commanding the Sith army. It would be a great day. And Dooku left the room as the three Jedi entered to find Chancellor Palpatine helpless and waiting. They went to rescue him when Dooku entered from behind. And after a bit of taunting from the Sith Lord, a decisive confrontation was set to unfold on the massive Separatist flagship. Anakin Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Ahsoka Tano, Jedi Heroes of the Republic, ignited their lightsabers and went in to attack in unison. And the battle erupted in a flurry of strikes. Dooku was a truly legendary ju duelist, easily parrying every single blow. His force powers were equally formidable, and he began hurling objects at the Jedi, trying to separate them, trying to get an advantage. And Anakin was fueled by his determination to end this war, to rescue his friend Palpatine. He fought aggressively, lightsaber strikes becoming increasingly fierce, increasingly unpredictable. Ahsoka was fighting with grace and agility, her twin green lightsabers weaving a great shield around her, Anakin, and Obi-Wan as Dooku tried to get in. And Obi-Wan sought balance between offense and defense, providing guidance, trying to provide support, 
trying to get in, trying to find any opening, but the Jedi could not. And as the duel raged on, Dooku found an advantage, despite being clearly outnumbered. He separated the Jedi, exploiting them. Ahsoka found herself isolated, struggling to fend off Dooku's relentless assaults, and Obi-Wan still trying to find an opening, was constantly on the defensive. And Anakin, however, slowly began to lose control. His anger was growing with each taunt from Dooku, pushing him ever closer to the dark path. And in a tragic turn, Dooku seized an opportunity, using a devastating force kick to send Anakin crashing against a wall, and he was not getting up. Ahsoka's focus began to waver as she saw Anakin fall, allowing Dooku to disarm her as well. He went in for a killing blow on the Padawan, but Ahsoka was able to be saved by Obi-Wan as he got in the way just in time. Dooku smiled at Kenobi, blasting Ahsoka to the wall with lightning, and now it was Dooku versus Kenobi, the master of Obi-Wan's master versus Obi-Wan, and he quickly became one of the duelists in the Jedi Order by this time, and he was able to hold his own versus Dooku, but Obi-Wan would never be able to kill him. Dooku was the greatest pure duelist, perhaps in the entire galaxy. The fight between the two of them raged on in front of the Chancellor. Anakin quickly awoke next to Ahsoka and looked to see Obi-Wan fighting Dooku and losing. Dooku saw Anakin awaken, and he went for the killing blow. Obi-Wan went for a strike over the top, but was hit in the face by Dooku's hilt. Then Dooku spun as Obi-Wan stumbled backwards, stabbing him in the stomach. Anakin screamed, No! as he locked eyes with his master, as he fell to his knees, dying. Ahsoka looked to Anakin and felt something inside of him, like a wave of darkness, a need for revenge had consumed him. She looked to his eyes and feared what she saw, raw power, determination, perhaps the dark side itself. She tried to hold him back, but Anakin shrugged her off, sprinting at Dooku. And Anakin, now teetering on the brink of darkness, channeled his fury into an assault on Dooku. His strikes were no longer just fueled by the Jedi Code, but by a deep-seated desire for revenge. Anakin perfectly swung at Dooku, focusing everything he had on defeating him. And now Dooku was backing up, understanding why Sidious was obsessed with Anakin. This power was kept hidden inside of him. Anakin punched Dooku in the face, and could have killed him there, but instead, Anakin, seemingly to taunt Dooku, got into a battle stance. Dooku recovered, Anakin spun back into battle, blocking strikes behind him, backing up Dooku, now disarming him officially, kicking him in the face. And Dooku scrambled to the ground, crawling away, while Anakin cut off his hands, and prepared to cut off his head. The Chancellor said that Anakin had done well, and he must kill him. Now, Dooku looked on with surprise and fear, beginning to understand now that he was only a pawn. And as Anakin was about to go for the kill, he was snapped out of this dark side trance. Ahsoka said, You can't, Anakin. This is the way of the Sith. Remember what you told me when Barriss took the dark path. It's the easy path. The wrong one. What would Obi-Wan want? And Palpatine, angry at the young Padawan, barked, Do it. And Anakin put away the lightsabers. Dooku was lifted up, cuffed on his forearms, Palpatine was freed. Anakin ran to Obi-Wan, saying that they had to get out of here, tears in his eyes, as he lifted Obi-Wan up the same way that he once lifted his mother. But Obi-Wan said that Anakin had done well, that he was proud of him, and that he taught Ahsoka well. Obi-Wan taught him the Force will be with him, always. And then, Obi-Wan seemingly looked past Anakin, to someone only he could see, and he said that he was ready. Obi-Wan died, and his body disappeared. Anakin took a moment to clear his tears, grabbed Obi-Wan's robes, then silently ran with Ahsoka, Dooku, and Palpatine. It wasn't easy, but the group escaped the ship as it crashed to the ground and went on to meet Masters Windu and Yoda at the Jedi Temple, with Dooku as prisoner. Anakin and Ahsoka were hailed as heroes on the holonet, for capturing Dooku, despite the loss of a friend. The sacrifice of Obi-Wan made the heroics of Skywalker and Ahsoka all that more impressive. Dooku was placed in the temple prison, and a funeral for Obi-Wan was held. Many of his Jedi friends were fighting off the war, but Anakin stood at the front, 
with many still in attendance, including Windu, Yoda, Padme, and friends Obi-Wan had made, including Dexter Jetster, the owner of a cafe that Obi-Wan always loved. Commander Cody, Captain Rex, and others were here, as Obi-Wan was laid to rest. And after the funeral, Ahsoka sat with Anakin. She remembered the dark path that he went on when Obi-Wan died, and she wondered what would happen if she ever died, or left him to be here alone. She didn't want to think about it, and was here to console Anakin, as he remembered Obi-Wan. Ahsoka said the whole thing seemed so weird. Why hadn't they taken off for hyperspace? Why was Dooku waiting for them? Why did Palpatine want Dooku dead so badly? Anakin thanked her, and said that Ahsoka's questions did make sense. He would ask the Chancellor himself, soon enough. And with Dooku captured, the war was set to end soon. The Council was glad, but also cautious. They knew the mysterious Darth Sidious was still out there, somewhere, hiding in the shadows, or perhaps in plain sight. Yoda discussed this with Windu, how Sidious could be anywhere. This was as they entered the detention center, where Dooku was being held. A moment later, Palpatine and his representatives walked in. Together, they began interrogating Dooku, asking where Grievous was, and where the mysterious Sidious was. For Dooku, this was a terrible position to be in. His hands were gone, and with them, a huge part of his abilities in the Force and with the lightsaber. He knew now that he was a pawn for Sidious. His master wanted Anakin to kill him. What was he supposed to do now? His entire plan was a failure. He may as well be dead. He likely would be soon if Sidious had his way. And he could still get revenge on the Dark Lord before he leaves. With a deep breath, Dooku said, The Sith Lord is. And his breath was caught in his throat. He began to choke, and he knew it was over. Windu and Yoda ran inside of the cell, but it was too late. Dooku died, unable to speak, locking eyes with Darth Sidious. He saw Palpatine give a slight smile, before yelling, in a panicked voice, The vents! I saw someone in the vents! Yoda pulled down the vent, running into it, while Windu sent the temple into full lockdown. In the panic that ensued, Palpatine was able to get outside of the temple and back to his office to make an announcement. The corrupt Jedi have killed prisoner Count Dooku, and they would be coming for him and the senators next. And as Palpatine got back into his office, Anakin was there, waiting for him. Palpatine greeted his old friend, and he said that the temple was in lockdown. Dooku was just killed right in front of him. This, to Anakin, further pushed suspicions that Ahsoka had put in his head. Could Palpatine truly be corrupt? Anakin wondered. And as Palpatine was here, he was afraid. He knew he never had the chance to put the nightmares in Anakin's head. There was no concern for Padme's life. Anakin knew she was pregnant, but she had no fear of her dying yet. This was bad. Palpatine didn't have time to turn Anakin, to put more doubt in his head. Anakin was still a Jedi. Yes, he touched the dark side going against Dooku, but Ahsoka had saved him. Ahsoka Tano. Palpatine hated her. And then, Anakin began questioning Palpatine. He said he was discussing things with Ahsoka, when they realized there was a lot of questions to be asked. Why he wasn't safely hidden away during the invasion? Why hadn't Dooku just jumped to hyperspace? Why was he waiting for the Jedi? And why did Palpatine so desperately want Dooku to be killed? And now, he died the moment Dooku and Palpatine were together again. Palpatine quickly realized he may be trapped, Ahsoka Tano, always in the way of things. Palpatine clicked a button under his desk to request immediate assistance, and quickly, his royal guard entered the room. Palpatine said, it was you, you killed Dooku, so all of the guards entering the room could hear him say Anakin was the killer of Dooku, the corrupt Jedi that was now here to kill him. Palpatine ordered them to fire, and so they did. Anakin was pushed to the window, and in the final second deflecting blaster fire, Anakin broke the window, flipping backwards to a civilian speeder. Blaster fire caught the engine, Anakin took over the driving. He flew as far as he could, lifting the civilian to safety with the force, then landing the crashing speeder on the stairs of the Jedi Temple. The crash was loud, and Anakin tried to stumble inside. He knew the truth. His suspicions were beyond correct, further than he ever thought. Palpatine was the Sith Lord. 
and Palpatine went to the holonet live recorder on his desk, flipping it on and telling the galaxy about the treachery of the Jedi. He said they were trying to take over. First, they killed the unarmed prisoner Dooku, and then he said he found Jedi hero Anakin Skywalker in his office to assassinate him. His guards arrived just in time to save him, but he said the corruption of the Order must be eradicated. All clones were ordered to execute Order 66. On the temple stairs, Ahsoka ran with Rex to help Anakin. Rex was here to discuss the next steps of the war, and as they were helping Anakin inside, Rex got the Order 66. Dropping his helmet, he was able to barely tell Ahsoka to find Fives, stumbling over his words. And then, he began shooting. Ahsoka cut down Rex's blasters, hit him unconscious. But something had changed. A shift in the Force. It was clear, the rest felt it as well. Across the galaxy, Jedi were being killed. Mace and Yoda ran up to Anakin who was extremely distraught from the truth. He revealed Palpatine had to be the Sith Lord. Ahsoka revealed Rex had just turned on her. The Jedi Masters were shocked, but Windu began gathering Masters Fisto, Tin, and Kolar to go to Palpatine with him, Yoda, Anakin, and Ahsoka. And as all of the Jedi were boarding a transport shuttle, in the distance, near the bottom of the stairs, they saw thousands of figures lining up, clones. And now Ahsoka understood. It wasn't just Rex. Yoda got out of the shuttle and said he would get the Jedi evacuated as best he could. He told Windu and the Jedi to destroy the Sith. He will evacuate the Jedi. When it is over, they must meet on a new planet. And the rest of the Jedi took off as the clones got closer. Anakin flew the shuttle, and quickly there were clones behind the shuttle now, shooting at them. Anakin, the greatest pilot in the Order, was able to lose them and escape through Coruscant, eventually flying right up to the window that he jumped out of not long ago, the window to Palpatine's office. Palpatine looked out and saw the six Jedi coming to him. He smiled, blasted lightning at the shuttle. All of the Jedi tried to jump out as it exploded, but they just were not going to make it. Agen Kolar realized this, and he didn't jump out. He used the Force to push the other five Jedi to the window as the shuttle exploded, with him inside. The other five Jedi didn't have time to mourn. Anakin, Ahsoka, Mace Window, Kit Fisto, and Saisy Tin landed, igniting their lightsabers and charging at Darth Sidious. The battle was intense, and quickly saw the death of Saisy Tin. The other four weaved in and out, Sidious somehow blocking all of their sabers while simultaneously striking at the Jedi. Anakin watched as Kit Fisto fell next to Saisy, and it was soon just him, Windu, and Ahsoka. Anakin charged forward, Sidious dodged his strike, and Anakin fell forward now. Sidious began to choke Ahsoka. Anakin saw this, throwing his lightsaber, causing Sidious to let go, and he ran forward again, this time slamming into the Sith Lord as he fell down to grab his lightsaber. Sidious was now on one knee as Windu went at him, slashing at the Sith Lord and disarming him. He went for a killing blow, but was engulfed by strong lightning and thrown to the edge of the window, using one hand to hold on to the ledge. Ahsoka ran over to help, and now Anakin went at Sidious. Anakin deflected the lightning, watching as it went back and burned through the Sith Lord. Sidious poured all of his power into the lightning, and as Anakin blocked it, he used his mind to guide Sidious's own lightsaber to his side. As the Dark Lord was about to overwhelm Anakin with the lightning, he ignited the Sith Lord's lightsaber right through his side, cutting Sidious in half. The lightning stopped, Anakin and Ahsoka lifted Windu back up and prepared for what was next. Clone troopers quickly poured through the door, speeder bikes of clones appeared at the window. The three Jedi deflected countless blaster bolts, and they thought that this was the end. Anakin caught a glimpse of the temple, on fire and crumbling. A blaster shot hit him in the arm. He saw Mace Windu straining to stay alive. He saw Ahsoka lose a lightsaber. This could be it. And the clones outside the window were suddenly sent into a fiery explosion. Seizing the opportunity, Anakin used the force to crash all of the clones in the room into the wall. Without knowing what was going on, the three Jedi leapt onto the ship that just saved them. As they fell into it, Anakin saw Padme, Bail Organa, Mon Mothma, and Yoda. And as the ship jumped to hyperspace, 
Yoda explained that the temple was mostly evacuated just in time. Many Jedi had fallen defending it, but the Jedi Order would survive. And when it came under attack, these three senators came to check what was happening. Yoda evacuated the Jedi, found the senators, explained it all, then they came to rescue these Jedi fighting Sidious. The Sith Lord was dead, the Chancellor was dead, many Jedi were dead, but the Republic was alive, and the Republic would rebuild without corruption at the top, and without the Jedi Order. The Republic would go on with its giant clone army, and no interference from Palpatine, to find Grievous, destroy him, shut down the Separatist army. The Republic would win the war, with Dooku and Sidious being gone from the Separatist side. The Republic would go on to succeed, and in time, a new Jedi Order was built, hidden away from the Republic, on the planet Tython. They would go on to serve the people of the galaxy, separate of the Republic, serving and learning about the Force. Ahsoka was soon made a Jedi Knight, Anakin a Jedi Master. Padme, Bale, Mon Mothma all returned to the Republic without suspicion, and Mon Mothma was elected as Chancellor. The hunt for the Jedi was stopped, and the Republic was rebuilt in a much better way under her leadership. The Jedi had lost, but perhaps this was a necessary reset for them. Padme went on to have children, Luke and Leia, and the father was kept secret from the galaxy. But one night, Anakin and Padme sat together with their children. Anakin smiled, looking down on them as they shared a blanket, the robe of Jedi Master and friend, Obi-Wan Kenobi. And in the netherworld of the Force, Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan watched as the Jedi went into rebuild, and as Anakin was happy with his children. That's our story today. Happy Ahsoka Day, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this one. I enjoyed writing it, talking about it, and hopefully I enjoy editing it. <laughs> Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. It was a lot of fun. We finally made it to Ahsoka. I hope it's wonderful. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.